The income splitting fight, that is the topic of tonight's byline. There is definitely a split in the Conservative caucus over income splitting. The questions are, where does the PM stand on this and which side's going to win the day? Jim Flaherty, the finance minister, hates the idea of income splitting, even though it was a prominent promise for the Conservative Party in the 2011 election and was mentioned in last year's budget. Flaherty hates the idea. He thinks it only helps the rich. I've heard him say those words with my own ears. Until now, though, I didn't think his views mattered. I thought the prime minister and the rest of the Conservative caucus were firmly behind their promise. Now, I'm not so sure. Yesterday and today, the PM has given less than definitive answers on these questions. Then today, a series of tweets from John Evison at the National Post. Iveson tweeted out, Most comment seems to suggest Jim Flaherty is offside with the prime minister. Not what I'm hearing. Apparently, they're on the same page. He also said the backbench is going ballistic, rowing back from income splitting, seen as breaking a marquee promise, a deck fight is promised. And income splitting is dead, Flaherty's just a messenger, concerns it will incent young women to stay home and worsen the skills shortage. I can confirm that the backbench is going ballistic. I can't confirm the rest. PMOs not speaking on this, not openly anyway, and MPs and staffers that campaigned on this promise are worried. The conservative promise was simple. Once the budget was balanced, families with kids under 18 can split up to $50,000 of income to lower the family tax burden. I think it's too restrictive. It should be broader. But this is what they promised. Now we're told it's a bad idea that might encourage women to stay home. That's a left-wing idea, one the feminists put forward because they don't like the idea of women raising their own children. What they mean is, if you don't tax a family to death, some mothers might actually choose to stay home and raise their own kids. They're against that choice. But now Flaherty is? Really? This is his thinking? Is it such a horrible conservative idea to lower taxes so that families might decide one parent can stay home. Do conservatives now support universal government-run daycare to further drive up the tax burden and expand government? I bloody well hope not. The truth is, given the option, some mothers will stay home. Some would work part-time and some would keep doing what they're doing. But it should be their choice. The argument for income splitting is about fairness. The left makes arguments that essentially amount to, it's sexist, nah, 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 it's sexist but they ignore that many women actually make more money than their husbands. This isn't a question of sexism or patriarchy. It's about fairness. Two families make the same amount of money, but one pays much more in taxes. Why? According to a study by University of Calgary economist Jack Mintz and doctoral student Matt Kraposky, a single earner family making $70,000 pays 30% more in taxes than a dual earner with families each earner making $35,000 apiece. Both families earn the same total income, but they're treated differently. One has more money in their pocket due to the tax system. That's not fair. And these figures are not the wealthy. They are, in fact, below the average family income in the city of Ottawa. I can also tell you from personal experience that this would have helped me when I was housing and feeding a family of six on roughly $40,000 a year. This is a policy of fairness for families, and it should go forward. Opponents such as Jim Flaherty will say that this benefits some people, but not others. Trust me, the tax system has plenty of examples of this. My wife has stayed home since our oldest was born. It's what she wanted. It's what we wanted. Other families chose to put their kids in daycare. They get to write off $7,000 a year for having someone else look after their kids. We don't get that. I'm not a union member. Union dues are tax deductible. In the union collecting the dues, it pays no tax. That benefits some people, not others. You get special deductions for taking the bus to work, putting your kids in art classes, living in the north. The tax system is filled with measures that benefit some and not others. Every tax measure does that. The progressive tax system that we have in this country taxes people that make more money a heck of a lot more than it taxes the poor, most of whom, people who are actually poor, well, they pay no income tax. It comes back in refunds. So yes, when critics say this will help high income people more than the poor, well, that's because they already pay tax. A family of four earning $24,000 a year will get their entire income tax back and then some under our system. Well, that helps some and not others. We should stop it. The conservatives need to hear loudly and clearly that voters expect them to keep their promise. They need to hear from you. You need to call, write, email, or otherwise harass your local MP, and you need to email the Prime Minister.
pm at pm.gc.ca. I repeat, pm at pm.gc.ca. Tell him you expect a promise made to be a promise kept. And that's the byline. Well, we haven't got a balanced budget yet. Um, obviously, we're getting close. Uh, once we have a balanced budget and once we get a surplus, we can have, uh, we can have obviously, the discussion about what we do next. But we're very clear. That was Prime Minister Stephen Harper earlier today. Alexandre Laurent is with the C.D. Howe Institute, one of the many groups saying the government should back away from this. I wanted to have him in to ask him why. Uh, Mr. Laurent, we had uh, Rick Smith in from the Broadbent Institute. I don't normally put the Broadbent Institute together with C.D. Howe, but you seem to be making similar arguments. Why do you say income splitting is a bad idea? Well, I, I didn't exactly say it's a bad idea. But uh, what our study showed is that depending on the objectives, uh, if the objective, like you were saying in your preamble, is to uh, increase, is, is to be more fair, it's to it, it's to provide equity between uh, two different types of families. Then what what we did is say, well, yeah, that uh, if you take uh, a, a fictitious family, uh, that you can find many examples where this is the case, and that's all fine. But if you look at the actual experience, actual families uh, and, and their experience, they, they get to, uh, for example, transfer some credits, uh, they, they get the spousal uh, credit, um, they get the spousal RSPs. There are, there are already some ways in there that will lower the, the unfairness a little bit, not all of it. Oh, trust then me, pay... trust me, it is only a little bit. Exactly. And then on top of that, uh, we, and, and again, I'm saying like we, we looked at the actual experiences of Canadians, actual tax filers, a, a huge database. So after that, we had the provincial taxes, the federal taxes and the payroll taxes. The payroll taxes, obviously, uh, there's more payroll taxes paid if, if, uh, the, if there's two earners and one earner. So once all of this is in, on average, there is still a tax advantage for the single earner families over the dual earner families. So yes, it's absolutely true that there is a tax advantage. Now so on top of this, uh, we, uh, we, we decide to look what happens if we, if we add the actual childcare expenses paid by families to the tax burden. So it's tax burden plus childcare expenses paid. All that in, uh, on average, there's not such an, a, a big inequality. It's pretty even between the two types of families with the same money income. So okay, so you're, you're, what you're saying is that I should pay more tax because someone else decides to put their kids in daycare. I, I don't well, understand that. The, 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 the rational is, is that for, um, for, for a, a stay-at-home spouse, the services that... The, the, this spouse provides to the family, which is which most of it is child care, but there's other things too. Uh, the dual owner family that works full time has to purchase it on the market, and uh, th there's an imputed value. It's in the study that you just showed, by, by the way, by Jack Mintz. Yeah. He acknowledged that. It's, it's analyzed by most economists. So if you want to compare equals to equals, you have to have, uh, to, to have some kind of value to the fact that someone is, is at home and, and providing in-kind services instead of purchasing on the market. So having that database, we were able to add the child care expenses, and, but those are averages. We are not, I am, I am not saying, and the study did not say that there is no unfairness at all and there, that we, we can't find uh, very, like, like you said, the tax system is full of unfairness and there are some uh, families, I'm sure, that are treated unfairly by the current system. But on average, if, if you look at the situation, it, it, it's the, the starting point is not as bad as, as it may look like if you just take two fix, fixtures family, two, you, you, may, you make them up and then you look at the, their tax burdens. I was speaking with someone whose uh, parents have very modest income of uh, about $25,000 in retirement. Income splitting for them uh, brought them roughly just under $2,000. Uh, that's significant savings. The Conservatives say if implemented, their promise would be $1,300 tax savings. I'm a fan of giving taxpayers money back to taxpayers. I mean, if I had my way, I would just have a flat tax system and get rid of all the deductions, period. But we're not going to go that route in Canada. It's not going to happen. So why not say, let's treat two kinds of families in an equitable way, which the current system does not. Well, if you want to do that, you'd have to remove the, the, the restriction that it would only apply to families with children. If, if, and I'm if, fine with that. 
because if you introduce it with the families with children only, it's not going to take many years that the other, uh, fa the other couples that don't have children will want the same treatment because it's the same unfairness. So you, you have to do it properly or you don't do it. But th th I'm sure there's a way. Like it, It's a big empirical study that we published, and we did that four years ago. It gives a lot of time to the government to look at the study and find ways to tweak their proposal a little bit to address some of these problems. I, and I'm not against tweaking. I'm not against improving. As, as I say, I agree it should be across the board, but I still think it's a, a policy worth pursuing. Uh, oh. Mr. Loren, thanks for uh, dropping by. My pleasure.